Agaray Gunbariga is a poor neighborhood of Lagos, an informal settlement with no school or hospital. Kehinde Samuel is a widow and lives here with her four children. Before the coronavirus pandemic, she was already struggling to cover energy costs for her house and to feed her family. It's become even harder since Lagos went into lockdown. When the coronavirus came, everybody had to stay indoors. Lots of families starved there. We only had food handouts from private organizations, and sometimes, if you were unlucky, the help might not reach you. Here, women do the cooking, usually over an open wood fire. And since this area is not on the grid, people use diesel-powered generators to get electricity. Burning these fossil fuels releases greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. The authorities had no clear idea about the fuel usage here, so they started to gather information. The survey we are carrying here is to know the type of energy they use in lighting, in cooking, and in you know, doing other activities. So it's important we should get this data and then use it to feed into our climate action plan to know how we you know, plan our actions to capture this informal, informal settlements in Lagos. C40 is a network of almost 100 cities around the world, including Lagos, that promotes climate action. This energy usage survey is being carried out under its guidance. The team go door to door. They've already uncovered the main reasons why solar energy is not used more widely in such informal settlements. Why people are not going for solar is because one, they don't have the adequate knowledge about it. And finance is actually a problem to get uh, is solar. But a local mini power grid is coming to Agawegun Buriga. The government wants 10,000 solar powered mini grids set up across the country by 2023. An environmental NGO teaches neighborhood residents how to set up solar panels and how to turn daytime sunlight into nighttime street lamps to make life here safer. And when it is night, it everywhere will be getting dark. So every, you can't see, even you can't see from here to that place. So, but when we install all this, you can see from here far distance. So that is the reason why we are doing this in the communities. Another problem here is poor sanitation. This is a public toilet. The waste goes straight into the river and contaminates the water used for washing and cooking. Another NGO called Justice and Empowerment Initiatives recently built this toilet facility, which uses a kind of composting system called a biofill digester to break down the waste. Artist Mutala Ghani Taiwo is contributing to the project. Even some other do come around, sit down with me, ask a few questions. Why am I making it so beautiful like this? Ah, uh, this painting should be, should be for my house. Why the toilet? And I said, well, it's, it will help attract you to the toilet to come use it. And you know, they said, wow, that's good too. So it's interesting and the community, they're happy about it. The facility cost 1,800 US dollars. To use it, you have to pay the equivalent of just under one cent. The money goes towards maintenance and cleaning. We seriously give thanks to Heavenly God who enlightened those people to come establish these uh, social amenities to, for us in this community. And we are still looking for another NGO again who can come to our help, who can come to our aid to build the more toilet because we need almost about uh, four or five toilets in this community. This single one we have there, here now is our tremendous unlimited happiness. People in Agawega and Bariga are also happy about the new solar-powered street lights that are going up. Kehinde Samuel is looking forward to having light during the long evenings. She might eventually be able to do away with her diesel generator. This would save her some much-needed money while also reducing the area's carbon emissions.